Morning everybody. It's an important day today. The caravan is going in for its annual service and I thought I would take you along with me and I will show you what happens when your caravan gets serviced. And also I thought we'd answer some questions that I get asked quite a lot about caravan servicing. So today I'm going to take the caravan down to the Swindon Caravan Group who have kindly allowed me to film the servicing of our caravan. And I've also secured some time with John who heads up the after sales team and I'm going to ask him some questions which you guys have asked me over the past few weeks and that will hopefully answer any questions that you have about caravan servicing. Now this subject is so big and there's so much to cover that what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two parts. So today part one is our caravan being serviced and then part two is me sitting with John and having a quick chat about caravan servicing. Now the process that I'm going to go through today with Swindon Caravans is pretty indicative of what you'll expect at any dealership up and down the country. There may be some slight differences but by and large this is what is expected of me when I drop my caravan off. It would be good to share with you the process of dropping the caravan off and the attention to detail that the guys down at the dealership really do give each and every caravan as they arrive. So with nothing else to do, let's just carry on emptying the caravan, loading up the car and head off down to the dealership. And uh, I'll pick you up when we're down there. So the first step is to book in with the after sales team. As you can see, I'm just pulling up outside of the office. I've popped in and I filled out some paperwork with the staff at the desk. Now they're going to give me a form which I must display in my caravan. Now they're going to contact the dispatch team, let them know that I'm uh, popping on round to the back of the workshops and I just follow the very simple roadway here and drop the caravan off. Now the dispatch team are going to do a visual check of the caravan. They're also going to check what I've got on the caravan, ask me questions about the alarm, the tracker, etc. and what sort of wheel locks I have on the caravan. So as you can see here, Steve is being quite thorough and he's making sure that any knocks or dings or dents or scuffs on the caravan are all documented and uh, he gives me a form at the end of the process which I sign and agree with. And that's it, that's the caravan now dispatched and dropped off. I simply go home and wait for a phone call from the service team to let me know that the caravan is ready. I on the other hand have had the great opportunity to follow our caravan through the servicing workflow and let's go now and introduce ourselves to the chap who's going to do all the servicing for us for our caravan. Right, so the caravan is in the bay now, it's time for its service and this is Ray who's going to do the uh, servicing for me today. Ray, just talk me through exactly what you're actually going to do on my van today. So basically, we're going to check all the safety aspects of the caravan. We're going to check the brakes, all the running gear underneath. We're going to lubricate everything underneath. We're going to check the road lights, we're going to check uh, the gas, but do a gas test, make sure there's no leaks. We'll also check the mains electrics, make sure it's all functioning correctly, make sure it's all safe. And lastly, we'll uh, do a full ingress test to make sure there's any, see if there's any damp in the van. Right, OK, OK. Uh, so that's the bit that worries everybody, isn't it, the damp test? Yeah, that tends to be most people's major worry. Yeah, OK. Right, so I suppose we better crack on and get on with it. OK, let's Brilliant. do it. Thank you. With the caravan safely attached to the hoist, it's lifted into the air. And as Ray rightly stated, it starts off with removing of the tyres. A visual check of the tyre condition, the sidewall, the tread and a date code ensures that they are still roadworthy. Now Ray is removing the single use nut. Once removed, this nut is discarded. Now inside the drum, the shoes are given a liberal cleaning and every surface and every item is given a good spray of degreasing solution. The spindle is re-greased and the hub is replaced and a brand new single use nut is added on. The nut is torqued up to specification and part of the process here is to add a red marker to show that the nut has been torqued up to the correct specification. The wheel is now added back onto the caravan. The nuts are tightened but not torqued up yet. That is handled when the caravan is back on the floor. But it's a good opportunity to check the tyre pressures. With the caravan raised up yet further, we can get underneath and start adjusting the brakes and ensure that they're not binding and that everything is adjusted correctly. The handbrake is adjusted to make sure it's working correctly. And once that's correct, it's time to move to the back of the van where we start looking at the spare wheel as well. The wheel is removed off of the carrier. Again, a tread and depth and date check is done on the tyre 
and the carrier is lubricated and new copper grease is put on the nuts to ensure they're good for purpose. The actual spare wheel carrier is greased and cleaned and whilst we're here it's a good opportunity to grease and clean all the steadies around the caravan. The handbrake assembly at the front of the caravan is also given a liberal clean up as well and now it's just a visual check to ensure that there are no loose fittings, everything is working well and nothing looks as if it's damaged. Ray took three trips around the caravan here to ensure that everything was working correctly and documented any faults or issues that he saw that needed immediate attention. Now lowering the caravan gives us an opportunity to look at the hitch. The jockey wheel is removed, the hitch handle is cleaned and inspected and the jockey wheel is actually disassembled completely. As you can see here it's a bit of a running thing but everything is stripped down, cleaned up and re-lubricated. In this case we're using some fairly thick grease to ensure that the jockey wheel will remain in good working order. Once it's reassembled it's time to fit it back onto the caravan and check that everything is working correctly and lining it up nice and neatly. So finally the caravan is back on the floor and this is when the wheel nuts are torqued up to the correct specification. Now part of the process here at Swindon Caravans is that Ray is doing the talking up but he then asks a colleague to also talk up the nuts as well to ensure that when the caravan leaves the workshop it is in a safe and legal manner. The paperwork represents this and ensures that everybody has signed off their proper yes. job. The next task is the road lights. So Ray is plugging in our 13 pin connection here into a test box and this gives us an opportunity to check all the road lights and ensure that the markers and the brake lights and the rear lights are all working as they should. It's an opportunity to check that the bulbs are functioning correctly at the back of the caravan including the number plate lights and the reversing lights. Once happy it's time to go around the caravan and ensure that all the locks and hinges are okay so as you can see here, Ray is literally trying out all the locks, dealing with the door lock as well to make sure that that's working correctly. The next task now is to look at the leisure battery. So Ray is pulling the leisure battery out of the caravan and is disconnecting the battery from the caravan. It's at this point that my uh, tracking company, Phantom, contacted me to let me know that I actually had a power down warning. Uh, that was a good opportunity to make sure that the tracker was working correctly. So Ray is now analysing the battery, ensuring it's fit for purpose and giving me a printout to the current state of the battery. Now we're moving on to the gas pipes and a visual check and a date check of the tail of the gas cylinder just ensures that it's fit for purpose and well within date. The first task here is to fill the system with air. So a test module here is plugged into the caravan pumped up to a pressure and we now leave it to check the pressure. Now whilst that's taking place it's a good opportunity to go back to the electric side of the caravan and check that the electric hookup is working well. So a visual check of all the plug sockets make sure they're working correctly. Now this piece of test equipment is plugged into the caravan and it tests the RCDs. It checks to make sure that the first of all the RCDs do break but it also times how long it takes for the RCD to actually trip out. Now in this case our caravan was tripping out at 29 milliseconds which is well within specification. Whilst inside it's a good opportunity to check the smoke alarms and the carbon monoxide alarms. Nip back outside and with the electric hookup still connected it's a good opportunity to check to make sure that the battery charger is working well. And to make sure that the battery charger is delivering good current. So with the leisure battery given a fresh bill of health, it's time to move on to the next task, which is to go and revisit the gas. So with the air test now complete, it's time to fit a gas supply into the caravan, check that all the burners are working correctly and that there's no yellow flames and that all devices are operating properly. A gas leak check is also conducted and also we check the flues around the caravan, including the fridge and the hot water to make sure that they are not giving out too high amount of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Now the final check is to do an ingress check around the caravan. As you can see Ray is using an ultrasonic damp check machine here and he's using this around the entire caravan. Now the trick here is to not trust the first warning but instead where there is a possible problem 
use the probe on the end of the machine to prove that the ultrasonic was not picking up a metal strut in the fabric of the caravan. The damp test is actually quite thorough. This is why it's such a good important reason to make sure your caravan is empty. Certainly we wouldn't be able to have a damp test done on the caravan if our bedding was still underneath these lockers. Every cupboard and every locker is checked and once it's happy and written down his report our approved 2017 sticker is added to the caravan to show that it's done for another year. Right, so that's the service now complete on our caravan. All done really well. Um, it was a real pleasure actually to have a first-hand experience as to what actually goes into a service. I didn't really appreciate how in-depth it actually is and how meticulous and how careful the guys here actually are when they're completing the service. Now, as a memento, I've got my bill and I've got a report here on the service that's taken place. Now, apart from that, I've also got some other mementos as well. The uh, one-use nuts, which are once they are taken off, they can't be reused. I've got those here as well. I've got a blown bulb, which was taken out of the number plate at the back of the caravan. And also the stabiliser handle as well had a crack in it. So they managed to replace that for me as well. So all in all, quite a good job. So that's it, I hope this video has been useful for you. I hope you have now had an insight into what takes place at a caravan service. Any questions, feel free to ask them down below. Until next time guys, I'll see you again soon. Take care now, bye bye.